What If World is supported by our sponsors and by listeners like you on Patreon. Folks at home, I want to tell you about the podcasting platform Anchor. Yes, Abacus, about Anchor. Did you know that it's free? I, I was just about to say. And it's everything you need to get your podcast started all in one place. Exactly. I honestly wish I could have started my podcast on Anchor when I first began. It's so simple to record and edit your show with their creation tools right from your phone or computer. Yeah, even a wizard can do it. <laughs> and you can let Anchor distribute your podcast automatically across Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all the major platforms. And you can easily stitch in ad spots to your podcast to earn money with no minimum listenership. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. That's anchor.fm, as in fairy magic. Sure, why not? What if kittens played the clock in spiel? And what if unicorns were real? What if you could fly or travel back in time? We welcome you to What If World. What If World. This is What If World. Hey there, folks. And welcome back to What If World, the show where your questions and ideas inspire off-the-cuff stories. I'm Mr. Eric, your host, and today we'll start with a question from Liliana. My name is Liliana. How old are you? I'm five and a half, and I like Cora. Cora is this avatar that I really like, and my question is, what if Swimming Glass was in the trees? What if, like, the Swimming Pool was in the trees, too? Or just yeah. the class? Just the class. Not the pool? Where's the no. pool? The pool is deep in the ground. Oh, the class is up in the tree. Okay. Great. Bye. Thank you very much, Lily. I really like the idea of swim class in the trees when the water's deep below the earth. Well, that sounds like trouble. And of course I know who Korra is from Avatar The Legend of Korra. When Miss Karen and I first met, she used to call me Avatar Boy because she and I both like that show. Okay, we've got one more question from Clara. Hi, my name is Clara and, um... What do you like? I like princesses, and my question is, what if princesses um, rescue knights? Thank you. Excellent question, Clara. I've never understood why princesses needed rescuing all the time anyway. Now, before we get started, I have a quick shout out to give to Simon. He's our newest patron. And what a nice kid. He said he'd be happy no matter which person from What If World said thank you. Yeah, thank you, Simon. Thank you, Simon. Uh, thank you, my dear boy. Simon. Thank you, dragon. I mean, Simon. Oh, thank you, Simon. Oh, I'm going to give you cheek a bitch. Okay, okay, everybody. I, I, I think Simon's had enough thank yous. And I'm sorry if you're listening to this podcast and you feel your cheek get pinched. That's just Mama Gemma. Imaginary fingers are just the best for pinching. Ow! You can say that again. Why would I say it again? Once was plenty. Uh, yeah, I guess you're right. Folks at home, one last quick thing before we start our story. I've got a chance to appear at South by Southwest next year, along with a panel of other great kids podcasters. From Wow in the World, Brains On, and Ear Snacks, three of my favorite shows. We want to share our secrets about making great podcasts that aren't just kid-friendly, but kid-focused. There's a link in the episode description where you can quickly register and vote up our panel. Thank you so much. And now let's find out what if swimming class was in the trees and what if princesses rescued knights. What if world's heat wave still hadn't broken? And if you heard last week's story, you know that nobody even made it to the beach. Good thing this week, Pixicato, Lola Rabbit, and Zizi had signed up for swim class. Okay, girls, we're here, said Mama Gemma, bringing her station wagon to a stop in the middle of the forest. 
Um, where is here? Asked Pixie Cotto. It looks like the middle of nowhere, said Zizi. Oh boy, 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 the forest! I love the forest. Almost as much as the hills, which I love almost as much as a nice little hole that I get to my way into. Okay, Lola, Lola, okay. Listen, girls, I'm not the swim instructor, okay? This is just where I was told to bring ya. Oh, there she is now, Lara Legend. And so Lara Legend appeared in a swirl of mist. She was broad-shouldered and muscly, with thick black hair to her shoulders, and dark brown skin like all the people of What If World South Pole. I am Lara Legend, here to teach you the secrets of swimming. Oh, she's really intense. I'm not sure how I feel about this anymore. She seems tough. I like tough teachers and tough elephants and tough dragons, but not as much as a good tough carrot. Okay, girls, you, you, you're going to have to get out of the car sooner or later, please. Thank you. Okay, bye. <laughs> Um, she drove off really fast. Yeah, do any of you know how long this class is supposed to be? I hope it goes on forever and ever 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 and ever. Silence! Your first lesson in swimming class is climbing. Oh, like a warm-up, I get it. Zizi was by far the tallest of the three girls, and she had an easy time climbing. May I just fly to the top of the tree? Asked Pixicato. I don't know. Is this flying class? Uh, No, but it's not climbing class either. Oh, good point. Yes, go ahead and fly. And Pixie Cotto zipped up the tree, Lola Rabbit keeping up with her by bouncing from branch to branch to branch to branch. Once they were at the top of this rather tall tree, Lara Legend appeared on a branch beside them and another puff of mist. When you swim, it is important to respect the water. It can lift you up or it can drag you down. Now it is time to swim, and Lara Legend gestured to a dry lake bed just ahead. Um, Miss Legend, I think the lake has dried up in the heat wave? It has not dried up. It has been used up by wasteful people who did not respect the water. Well, that's a lovely lesson, but how are we supposed to swim? That is a riddle you three must solve for yourself. Lola Ranamo! cried Lola, bouncing out of the tall tree toward the empty lake bed. Lola! 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 Zizi yanked off Pixie Cotto's fairy dust pouch and threw it at the falling rabbit like a fastball, just as Pixie Cotto flattened her wings and dove after her friend in a flash, in the same moment that Lara Legend called up a jet of water from a nearby geyser. And as they all moved to save their friend... Sir Squiggles suddenly burst into the clearing, riding atop his cylindrical steed, Loggy. Never fear, Sir Squiggle is here, said the knight, trying to charge toward the falling bunny. But before Sir Squiggle could even finish talking, (laughs) the fairy powder pouch hit the little bunny and she started floating erratically. Then Pixicato was right beside Lola to steady her floating friend. And finally, that stream of warm geyser water formed a gentle pool in the air, just in time for Lola's toes to dip right in. Ooh, it's warm, but not too warm. Yes, I was going to reveal the water as part of the lesson. I didn't expect any of you to jump right out of the tree. (laughs) Well, I guess you've never met Lola. Lola, you've got to be more careful. What are you kidding? I trust Lara Legend. By the way, who is that scribbly guy? It's a squiggle guy, not a scribble guy said the knight. He was one long, squiggly line that curled in and out of a set of silver armor. Hi-ho, Loggy. Let's go save the princess. She's not a princess, called Zizi from up in the tree. And I got saved pretty well without you. But I sense a princess, uh, maybe two. Fine, yes. Technically, I was princess of the penguins in the South Pole. (laughs) That's awesome. Well, they taught me water weaving, which is what I will use to help you learn to swim today. Well, technically, I'm also princess of pixies. No way. You're a princess? Everyone in fairyland is prince or princess of something. It's hard to keep track of. Then I will stay until you need to be saved. And Loggy reared up on its hind circle, then launched itself into the lake basin. But the steep, dusty sides of the dried-up old lake just gave way before the cylindrical steed. (laughs) 
Loggy neighed nervously as she slid deeper into the lake bed. A slow down, said Sir Squiggles, extending one arm around Loggy to use his reins. <laughs> Silly night, said Lola Rabbit, splashing around in her warm pool of water. Oh, boys, said Lara Legend, pulling up one last string of water from the spent geyser to try to slow down the falling night. And Pixicato bravely flew towards Sir Squiggles, even though she was far too small to hold him in his heavy metal armor. Don't worry, Loggy is the finest steed on zero legs. And just like that, Loggy buried her circle head into the sand, all the way up to her silvery mane in order to slow her descent. Unfortunately, Sir Squiggles had slid near the back of old Loggy. So when Loggy's head went down, Loggy's rear went up, launching Sir Squiggles as if he'd been sitting at the end of the world's most unsafe seesaw. I'm starting to think I could use some saving. But before he could finish, he'd fallen into the hole where the geyser water had come up from. (laughs) <laughs> cried Loggy sadly, burying her head so deep in the sand, but she just looked like a tall stump. Now Lara Legend and Pixie Cotto had been fast, but neither one of them could catch an armored knight launched like a cannonball. Oh no, 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 we've got to save him, said Lola Rabbit, bunny paddling to the edge of her floating pool. I'll just fly down there and no you can't. The water's washed away your fairy dust, and that was all I brought. Zizi looked down from her tall tree into the empty geyser below her. If I dive down there, there's probably water at the bottom. I'm afraid I took all the water out, said Lara Legend, water weaving her two pools together to form a long, winding river in the sky. But I heard you were a water weaver and a fire fender and a rock roller and an air archer. That's true, but I was a water weaver first, and if you're going down that far, it's the only element I trust. If you're a rock roller, just open up the geyser and go down there. It's a very old geyser. If I disturb its rock walls, it could crumble upon him. Or you. I'm sorry, you kids are going to have to save Sir Squiggles yourself. Best swim lesson ever, said Zizi, diving towards that floating river of water. Actually, we haven't been taught the first thing about swimming yet. But the flying river scooped up Pixicato too, and <laughs> turned into a narrow jet of water, half as wide as the broad-shouldered Lara. And the three children rode the raging river as it squeezed through the gap in the geyser. <sighs> Suddenly it was dark, and the river spread out a little wider as the three kids fell through the empty tunnel. They had to keep swimming to keep from falling out of the whirling water. Lola, Pixie, you okay? asked Zizi, and suddenly the Pixie lit up with her own sparkling inner light. I can't say I enjoy falling endlessly while swimming for dear life. I can say that, I can say that, I can say that. Okay, we're all here, just keep swimming. We have to reach the bottom before long. But before long came and went, and the kids were getting tired. When they finally feared they couldn't swim another foot, they heard, Oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, oh, ah, roly, poly. Oh, no, he's bouncing off the sides of the tunnel. Oh, don't worry, he's two-dimensional. Ever notice how hard it is to hurt a cartoon character? I don't think that's what she's worried about said Pixie Cotto, the light shining off of her tiny pixie form finally illuminated Sir Squiggle, who clunked and clattered at last to the bottom of this deep, dark cavern. Saved by a princess, I will never live this down. Well, wouldn't you rather live? But the shame of a girl helping a boy. Oh no, he oh, no. did it. A voice echoed through the deep, dark cavern, just as they heard... <laughs> A crumbling sound from above them. Ah, what's that? Who's there? Asked Lola Rabbit. There's no time. I think the guys are starting to collapse, said Pixie Cotto. Sir Squiggles, you're going to have to lose that armor if you want to float in this water, said Zizi. A knight without armor? Cried Sir Squiggles, just as a giant pair of red pincers clamped down on his silver armor, cutting into it like a tin can. I am princess of all things with pincers, but I don't need a tiara. It was Cindy Crawdad. What if world's giant lobstery princess of pincers? Please don't eat me. Why does everyone always think I'm gonna eat him? 
cried Cindy, her pincer clamping down further. Cool! Can I jump on you? What? I'm sorry, princess, uh, pr- princess, but if we don't leave right now, we could get crushed by falling rocks. Falling rocks? I ain't afraid of no rocks, said Cindy Crawdad, and she curled up her armored tail to cover the three girls and the squiggly knight, just as an avalanche of rocks and boulders started to rain down into the cavern. <coughs> Fortunately, Cindy Crawdad was one powerful princess. Saved by princesses twice! Sir Squiggles started to complain, but one of Cindy Crawdad's eye stalks bent to give him a glare. So nice is what I was going to say. When the rock avalanche finally stopped, the girls suddenly realized their river of water wasn't holding them up anymore. They were just wading in the pool at the bottom of this cavern. Oh, it's gonna take a long while to dig out of this, said Cindy. But then they heard... <laughs> Another rock avalanche. This is too much excitement, even for me. And Lola Rabbit huddled against the giant lobster monster. But suddenly there was a clearing in the rocks. Lara Legend. Lara Legend. Lara Legend, took you long enough. Hello, Cindy. I see they brought your water back. Yeah, I wasn't expecting to see this night, though. Well, we had to improvise a little bit today, didn't we? Huh? huh. What, what? She and I have been teaching together a while now. Giving the water back to the creatures who need it is supposed to be the final part of the lesson. I will need a long shower to wash off this lobster smell. You should take a short shower to save water. And you shouldn't insult people who just saved your life. Can I bounce on his helmet? Oh, can I, can I, can I, can I, can I? I have been rude. I deserve it. Boink, 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 boink. I need a nap. I was going to ask if you had one more swim in you, but I guess I have my answer. And Lara Legend started lifting them up the half-collapsed tunnel on a big rolling rock. Bye, Princess of Pincers. Bye, Princess of Pixies. How do you know each other? Is there some kind of princess convention? Yes, of course. There's a rabbit sleeping in my head. (laughs) The end. All right, Liliana and Clara, I hope you enjoyed your story. Folks at home, if you want early access to episodes and you want to never hear an ad again, check us out at patreon.com slash whatifworld. There are lots of other rewards on there, and every patron has a better chance of getting a question answered. We also always want your ratings and reviews on Apple Podcasts. That's the quickest, easiest, freest way to help me. And it's a nice way to leave a question and show your support for us at the same time. I'd like to thank Karen Marshall O'Keefe, my co-creator, Jason O'Keefe for our artwork, Craig Martinson for our theme song, and all you kids at home who know that what you do and how you treat others is more important than any title, princess, knight, or otherwise. You might assume someone you meet's going to be shy or awkward. Give them a chance. Treat them like they're just as good and smart and kind as you. Most of the time, I bet it'll pay off. And until we meet again, keep wondering. What is world? This is world.